Hey y'all, welcome back to uh, Parsons Productions. In today's episode, we've got some exciting new packages that came in the mail, and I'd like to share them with you, so stay tuned. So the first thing on the list is, a while back, a, uh, a tire shop decided to snap all my lugs coming off my wheels uh, in half. So they use an impact gun and tighten them down way too much, and resulting in them snapping off. So now I've got some ARP studs. Uh, these are super high quality. Uh, they should do the trick rather well, and I'm excited to put these on. I only got five, because I'm missing two, uh, both on the passenger side. So I'm gonna be replacing a number of those. So the next item on the list is these awesome lug nuts I got. You can see that they are long studs. Uh, they're very, very spiky. Uh, you can see in comparison to my my old ones with the neochrome finish they're a lot longer they're a lot sharper and they're definitely going to hit your uh, shins when you walk by them so that's going to be awesome and then last but not least i got something from detroit axle these are gonna be freaking sick first thing up on the agenda are some superior stopping power they've got drilled and they've got slotted uh, brake discs. So these are for the fronts. You can see these boys are nice and shiny. Really good quality. Got them online, say about uh, 300 bucks for everything here. This whole box came with fronts, rears, and uh, brake pads, which are ceramic brake pads. I'll show you those here next. So here are the premium ceramic brake pads. I had these exact same uh, ones on my 350Z. That thing stopped like no tomorrow. It was insane. So these ones should be really nice. You can see uh, it comes with everything you need. Little brake pads, the clips in here. And it was also really nice of them. They sent this as well too, DOT3 brake fluid, in case I need to top off, as well as brake cleaner. So it's a complete package. Uh, I got it on eBay. I'll list the uh, link below. And so with that, we're gonna go ahead and install all these things. So my very first step would be to remove the little spikes I have on the end of my lug nuts, followed by removing the lug nuts themselves. Once your wheel is removed, you're gonna go ahead and locate your caliper bolts. There will be two of them, one on top and one on bottom. You're gonna go ahead and take a 14 millimeter end wrench and loosen both of those. Now keep in mind, Mine were pretty uh, stuck on there, so you might need to use some lubricant such as WD-40 or penetrating fluid to loosen them up. Once your caliper is off, you're going to go ahead and remove the brake disc itself. An easy way to do this would be to take a soft mallet, or in my case a hammer since I wasn't planning on reusing the disc itself, and just tap it all around lightly until it comes off. Sometimes rust can form on both sides, making it impossible to pull it off. So just give it a few taps with the hammer and it'll come right off. Next step can be kind of tricky. We're going to be replacing the wheel stud. So in order to properly get these off, uh, usually you can take a hammer or a large mallet and get enough force to swing and smack the stud itself back out of the hub. Now those are just pressure fit in there, so usually smacking will do the job. Unfortunately I was not recording for this, uh, but keep smacking it and it will come out. the next step, we're going to be preparing the parts for paint. Uh, anytime you have a component underneath your wheel or behind your wheel, such as your brake calipers, rotors, brake pads, etc., they're going to be covered in brake dust. Now we need to clean them in order for the paint to properly stick. In this application, I'm using a wire brush, a steel wire brush in this case, as well as various scuff pads, sandpaper, and brake cleaner. I'm going to town on these, cleaning them up really nicely because the paint will not stick unless we clean them properly. Other events that should occur are cleaning the piece, the workpiece, a primer for the workpiece, as well as a top coat for the workpiece. Now, in this application, I totally skipped the primer phase. Now, do not skip this step because that paint is not going to stick properly. And I totally messed up on this first one on the rest of them, the passenger side rear as well as the passenger side front and the driver side front, I used the primer. Now on the driver side, or excuse me, the passenger side front, I did not use the primer and the paint kind of 
beat it up and it didn't really look proper. So make sure to use a primer. Any high build primer will work just fine. Now it's time to prepare our brake rotors. The brake rotors always come with a thin layer of grease along the surface, the mating surface, and that prevents rust from forming. So in order to properly install them, we need to remove that grease layer. So I'm using a brake cleaner with a paper towel to lightly rub along the surface, the braking surface that is, to remove that thin layer of grease. Now it is time to reinstall our brake caliper bracket. There are not one but two bolts in the rear. We're gonna go ahead and bolt those back in. Once they're back in, we can fit our brake pads. Now you're gonna kind of fuss around with them a little bit. There are two metal brackets on each side on the top and the bottom of the brake caliper itself, and those will hold your brake pads in. So watch along as we install this. Well, as unbelievably sick these lug nuts look, they actually suck. Uh, it's very unfortunate. However, every single lug nut that I put on stripped, uh, which is bizarre in my mind because they weren't cheap necessarily, but they weren't all that crazy expensive. So I assumed they would work. Uh, however, they all stripped. So um, I had to put my old ones back on. Alrighty, so final review of the Subaru BRZ's eBay brakes. Uh, they work great, they, they really do. They really stop the car uh, really abruptly. Um, at first there was a lot of sponginess feeling, almost to the point where I had to, uh, had to bleed them. But however, I, I didn't end up bleeding them and they eventually worked themselves in. I think they just need a little bit of a, a warm up period. But once I was able to get that warm up period, cooled out, they really, really stop. So far better than a stock application, if I do say so myself. And uh, I think if I was gonna do something in the future, it's definitely gonna be steel braided brake lines just to get that really abrupt stopping power. So if I do need to stop really quickly, I won't crash into anything. So appreciate you guys watching. Thanks for watching another episode of Parsons Productions and I'll catch you guys in the next one.